How's it going everybody? Jared here and today we're going to be working on how to do remote notifications with Firebase. So in order for us to do this, let's go ahead, open up Safari and we're going to go over to firebase.google.com. And inside of here, go ahead, sign up, or if you already are signed up, just go ahead, click get started for free, and that'll take you over to your apps. And then now you can go over here and just say create new project. So for our project name, I'm just going to go ahead and say this is my remote notification. So I'll just say remote note, and then just go ahead and create project. And then now that we're in here, let's go ahead, go over here to our left bar and just say notifications. And then inside of here, it's going to say add an app to get started, and we're going to hit iOS. And inside of here, this is where we're going to enter our bundle ID. Now to get our bundle ID, let's go ahead, go over to Xcode and create a new Xcode project. This will be a single V application, although it works with all types of applications. So go ahead, click next and product name. You can call this whatever you want. It's going to be your own app, but I'm just going to call this my remote notifications. So now go ahead, language, Swift, devices, universal. And then also with your organization identifier here, you want to make sure that there's a com in front of this. So it's like com dot and then your organization name. And then uh, at the end, you can see this is your bundle identifier right here. You just want to make sure that there is a com. So com dot architap dot remote to otherwise, it will not work. So go ahead, click next and create. Now inside of here, we don't need to worry about any programming at the moment, but we need to head over here to our capabilities. Now inside of our capabilities, you want to make sure that your push notifications are enabled. Now also, if you want to head over here to Xcode and then preferences, you want to make sure that your account or your developer.apple.com account is hooked up properly. Uh, with your account in Xcode. So go ahead and hook that up if it's not already hooked up. But mine is already hooked up, so I'm gonna go back here. And then inside of here, it's just asking for your team that you wanna develop with. Mine is Jerry Davidson, so I'm just gonna head and say choose. And then it's going to add an app ID into the developer.apple.com. So we'll be playing around with that in just a second. But we also wanna go down here and go to background modes and turn that on as well. And then we wanna say remote notifications is on make sure that's all on or else it will not work properly. And you should be good to go. So now we can go ahead, go back over here to our project and you know our iOS bundle ID. So I'm gonna say mine is com.architap.remote2. So that is how I have my bundle ID and you can check that over here in your general and bundle identifier. You wanna make sure that's all properly set. It will not work otherwise. So now I'll go back over here and then we can just say add app. And then now that we have that added, it's going to download a file for you called Google service info.plist. So right over here, you can see that it's been downloaded in my downloads. So I'm gonna take this, go back over to my project, my Xcode project right over here, and just drop that in. And for our destination, copy items if needed, we're gonna say yes, add to targets, we wanna to add to that target, and then go ahead and say finish. And then now let's go over here to our Google services info. And mine says dash six. If yours has any number after it, it will not work properly. So go ahead and delete that number with the dash and you should be good to go. And then now that we have that done, let's go back over to Firebase, click continue, and we want to install our pod file. So if you don't know what CocoaPods is, just go ahead, head over to CocoaPods.org and you'll be able to find out what it is, read all about it. But you want to make sure that you have that installed. So if you don't know how to install it, just go back over here. We're going to go over to our terminal and you just want to take this little piece of code right here, sudo gym install uh, CocoaPods. Without the dollar sign, you just want to copy that and you want to paste that right in there. I already have it installed, so I'm just going to skip that process and see where I am in my directory right now. So I'm going to say ls to see where I am. Then I'm going to go cd and go where I want to go. So I want to go in the desktop, but you might have it in your documents. So go ahead and say cd desktop or documents and then see where we are in there. And then just go ahead and say cd remote to. And then now we're inside of this file right here. And you want to make sure that you are inside of the file that has your remote2.xcode project. Otherwise, this will not work properly. So now we can go ahead and say pod init. And then we're going to add a pod file into our Xcode project, as you can see. So now we can go over here to our pod file, double click on that, and we can add a few things to this. So let's go ahead and delete these bottom two targets right here that says tests and UI test. We don't want to really care about those. And then inside of this target right here, we're going to say pod, open close apostrophe, and then we're just going to add our Firebase, like so. And then also with this Firebase, we want to say pod, and this is going to be open close apostrophe again, and this will be our Firebase slash messaging. This is actually how we enable remote notifications inside of our app. So now that we have our pod file edited, just go ahead and say command S to save our pod file, close that up, and then we're just going to say pod install. And then that's going to install our Firebase and our Firebase messaging inside of our Xcode project and also create an Xcode workspace as well. And that's where we're going to be using instead of Xcode project from now on.
And there you have it. Now we have our remote2.xc workspace. So from now on, we'll be working inside of this. Now we'll get remote notifications working in just a second, but let's head back over to our project and we're gonna go over to our Firebase and then just hit continue. And now in step four, it wants you to add these two lines of code right here. So let's go ahead, go back over to our project, head over to our appdelegate.swift, and we're just gonna go ahead and say import Firebase, like so. So now we have Firebase imported inside of our project. And then we also wanna add this second line of code, so fur app.configure. So fur app.configure, as you can see right there. And then just let's head back over here and say finish. So there you have it. Now this is kind of misleading. It says send your first message as if like you're ready to send your message. Uh, you're not ready to send your message. So in order to actually send our message, we're gonna go over here to developer.apple.com. And inside of here, you're just gonna log into your developer account, head over to your certificates, IDs, and profiles. Go ahead, click on that. And then we wanna go over here to your app IDs right here. And you wanna find your same bundle identifiers. So mine will be com.archadapt.remote2. So go ahead, I'm gonna click on that and then I wanna say edit. And then in here, I'm gonna scroll down all the way down to the bottom here and just go over to Apple Push Notification Service SSL Certificates. Now with this, you're gonna go ahead and say create certificate. And basically what this is wanting you to do right now is create a CSR file. Now the way you create a CSR file, we're gonna go over here, go over to Keychain Access, and then just go over here to Keychain Access, go over to Certificate Assistant, and then we're going to say request a certificate from a certificate authority. So go ahead and we're requesting a certificate. And then just go ahead and enter your email address and then your common name. And then we're just gonna say this is saved to disk. And as you can see, it's gonna save a little certificate right here. You can save it wherever you want. We'll pretty much not need this in just a minute, but let's go ahead and say save. And then we're gonna replace the one that I already have there for some reason, and then just say done. So now that we have that created, let's go ahead and say continue inside of developer.apple.com. And then we're gonna say choose file, and we're going to choose our certificate that we just created. So go ahead, choose that, and then just say continue. And there you have it, it's created a certificate with that certificate that you just created. So you can go ahead and say download that. And then we're going to take this and just double click on it. And that's going to add that inside of your keychain access. Now it'll be under login and my certificates. So if you don't know where it is, it's gonna be right here. Mine is this Apple developer and it ends with architap.remote2. And once you have your certificate inside of your keychain access, the next step in this is to go ahead, open it up, and we're gonna click on this key right here. So we're gonna right click on that and say export. So we're exporting this as, and you can call this whatever you want. I'm just gonna leave it as the name it is, and we're gonna save it on our desktop. And this is going to be a .p12. You wanna make sure it's that, otherwise it won't work. So go ahead and say save. And then it's gonna ask you to put a password in there for your certificate. It's gonna be whatever password you want. And then this is going to be the password in which you use with keychain access. So this is going to be my password. And there you have it. If you look on my desktop right here, you'll see that a certificates.p12 was just created. So now we can go back over here and we're just gonna say done for that. And then we're also gonna go back over to firebase.google.com. And inside of here, we're gonna click on our little gear, say project settings. And then we're gonna go over here to our cloud messaging. And then now that we're over at this page, we can just go ahead and say upload certificate and then browse for our .p12 file that was just created. So we can take that and say choose. And then for a certificate password, this is what you used uh, when you created your certificate. So go ahead and say upload. And there you have it. And it's saying this certificate is valid until this time next year. So you wanna renew this every year. Just keep that in mind. So now that we have all that done, let's go ahead, go over to Xcode and enable remote notifications inside of our project. So let's go ahead, go over to Xcode. Now for the next part of this project, we're gonna go over ahead, go into our appdelegate.swift and we're gonna say import Firebase uh, messaging, as you can see right here. And then down here, uh, we're just gonna go to the end of this project right here, and I'm gonna say application. And we're gonna say this one right down here that says application did receive remote notification. So go ahead, type all that in. And inside of here, we're just gonna print our user info. So this is the stuff that's created right here. This is essentially our full message. So this is the information that we have sent to our user. Now this will print out our message when we receive something, but it's not going to actually send a no notification our way. So let's go ahead, go up here to our application did finish launching with options. And we're gonna say let notification types colon, and this will be UI user notification uh, type and we're gonna set this equal to, and this will be an array of UI user notifications. So this is going to be my UI user notification type dot, and you can say alert. And then we're pretty much gonna do this the whole time. So you can just take that, copy that, and paste that so that we have three of those. 
delete that last one, and then we're just going to say dot, and then this is going to be badge, and then this last one is going to be sound. So we're enabling these notification types inside of our application. And then we want to apply some settings to this. So we're going to say let notification uh, settings equal. And this will be a UI user notification settings. And then we're going to say open parentheses, four types. And then four types, we're just going to put in our notification types that we just created right up there. And then our categories, we're going to set this equal to nil. And then for this last one, we're going to say application.register for remote notifications. And then we're also going to say application dot register user notification settings, this one right here. And we're going to put in these notifications that settings that we just put up right here. So we're just going to type that in. And then also one last thing that we forgot to do is go down here to our application did receive remote notification. And we also want to print one last thing. And this will be our message ID. So we're going to say print message ID colon slash open close parentheses and this will be equal to our user info and then just say open close brackets and then inside of this say quotes and we're just going to say gcm underscore message underscore id and then that should all be closed off and then with this message right here we want to make sure this is optional so we're just going to put an exclamation point at the end right there and now we should be good to go so now let's go ahead build and run this and i'm actually going to build and run this on my device uh, the ipod so i'm going to build and run that there and I'm going to go over here to my Firebase project. We're going to go over here to our notifications and we're going to say send your first message. Enter your message text, enter your message nickname if you feel like it, uh, delivery date, send now, uh, target, you can target specific uh, like a single device or a topic or a user. I'm just going to do a user segment so keep that in there. And then we're going to say this is targeting the app com.architap.remote notifications. And now let's head back over to the device. So now with the device, as you can see, it's asking for permissions. And that's what we programmed in the app delegate.swift. So let's go ahead and say OK. So now let's actually head out to the background of our iPod right here. And let's send the message. So now I have my iPod. And I'm just going to go ahead and click Send. And it's going to send that notification straight to the iPod. And there you have it. So there you have it. That's how you send remote notifications using Swift with Firebase. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. If you did, be sure to hit that like button down below. And if you want to see more tutorials like this from me in the future, be sure to subscribe. Anyway, I will see you in the next one. Bye.